Hello, welcome to Frankfurt Book Fair 2020. Today my guest of honor is Defne Sadıklar Aslan. She is the Director of Atlantic Council Turkey Program, expert in economy, business, energy and environment. She has also served as the Chief Economist and Senior Advisor for the U.S. Department of State on Economy, Finance and Energy in Turkey. Hi Defne, thank you for being with us today. Hi Aslan, thank you for inviting me. It's an honor to be here today with you in this beautiful place, beautiful home and beautiful Çeşme, right? Thank you. Today I would like to ask you about life after COVID-19 pandemic. How did COVID-19 affect the global economy? Uh, dear Aslan, this is an issue that, you know, just a lot of experts talk about, you know, just and uh, as you may have also followed with both World Bank and IMF and always as well as OECD recently published reports on this issue. And uh, it's a fact that, you know, the all the economies, you know, just globally uh, will be contracting because of pandemic. Uh, IMF expects something around 5% contraction this year. And so I mean, so did the World Bank, you know, just maybe higher than IMF. You know, I think World Bank forecast was about 5.4% contraction for this year. And uh, personally, I do expect the contraction to be a bit higher than this, you know, just these two, and also for next year. The problem is that, you know, just nobody knows how long this period will, will be prolonged. You know, just uh, we all hope that this will be over soon as uh, as the vaccine, you know, just will be found and applied on people. But unless the vaccine is f uh, found, you know, just so even though the all economics look like going back to normal, we are not at normal yet. You know, just till we have months to go to go back to normal, which means that the contraction will continue and increase, you know, just globally. Why is this? Because of the, you know, just uh, the lockdown in the past, you know, just uh, the, uh, this had an impact on revenues of the or individuals, ordinary people, right? And uh, this also, you know, had an impact on the tax payments of these people. So this means that not only, you know, the individuals, you know, just beca became poorer, so did the governments. And also the governments, not only, you know, just uh, they are, you know, tax revenue receipts decreased during this period. They also had to, you know, subsidize the people, subsidize the economy, subsidize, you know, through different incentives so that the economic circle can uh, keep uh, keep moving. Uh, this also had an impact on the government finances as well. So uh, I just recently read an you know article which uh, says that only in New York State, in in the United States. The tax revenue contraction uh, from between first quarter and second quarter was 40% this year. It's a huge number. You know, it is only one state in the U.S. And I mean, we can talk about all the countries specifically, but I mean, uh, the main thing, you know, the economic contraction, people got poorer, you know, just companies' finances decreased, and the governments also got poorer, you know, just so it's a difficult stage for everyone. So we need to be patient and hold our breath for a while. Indeed, indeed. What are the challenges and opportunities that all the countries faced during the COVID-19 pandemic? And what actions did they take? As we have discussed before, you know, just the first immediate impact of all the countries were uh, to, uh, you know, urge for a lockdown so that to prevent the pandemic. But this also had consequences, you know, just on the life of the people, on the, you know just economies of the government you know countries and also finances of the corporates, uh, and uh, on the, uh, and these were the you know the in initial reaction and also you know the second uh, uh, step uh, reaction of the country uh, countries were to uh, provide uh, stimulus and finances to people to companies so that the economic circles can actually continue. Uh, so these were the immediate reactions. As you know, uh, now the vaccine work is underway. You know, just so these were the, this was as a first step. So once the vaccine is uh, can be found and applied on people, then we all can go back to normal. Uh, and of course, you know, just this uh, at this this uh, during this crisis time, the roles of the governments and uh, play more important uh, role than ever. So. Uh, in some countries, there were some social issues and protests. Do you think COVID-19 triggered social issues? Uh, this is a very interesting question. Uh, it, might, it might have an impact, 
uh, you are right. Uh, it is because I think this was a period uh, for all uh, uh, people of the world to uh, realize and to think about uh, whether they are being uh, treated fairly by governments, by their own governments, uh, whether they fare a just treatment, uh, what they are, it is missing in their lives, uh, what kind of you know discrimination they are being faced at, you know. So uh, I think uh, people start to become more sensitive toward these uh, issues and their own individuality and also in the society that they live in. And, uh, and of course, uh, they, the social reaction was just to demand what they are, what is missing in their lives. Thank you. Daphne, you are also an expert in energy. During COVID-19, energy sources has become more important than ever. How will the energy sector change after the pandemic? Uh, thank you, Aslan. You know, just uh, thank you for calling me an expert on energy as well. Uh, in my humble opinion, of course, energy resources uh, have been uh, important as always. I mean, in the past also now. Whether it has a relation, it is related to COVID or not. You know, just uh, we can question that. But the thing is that, uh, of course, the market dynamics have changed in the sector as well as well as in other sectors. The prices have changed. You know the uh, the crude high hydrocarbon prices. You know which were very low before the pandemic. Now you know just in, uh, increasing, which uh, and uh, and also renewable energy, right? You know just so uh, everything is depend at the end of the day. You know the pricing of all these markets. You know just so whether it is a, uh, if the uh, projects will be bankable. You, you know just so uh, and the demand and supply conditions in Europe in the U.S. And uh, what will be, you know, just uh, the preferred, you know, just sector for the people. Now, of course, renewable energy is more, out, you know, seems to be more uh, outstanding, you know, because of the climate uh, reasons as well. Uh, and, uh, and the LNG as well is also, you know, just on the rise. But on the other hand, you know, as I mentioned, you know, there's a, this is a big, big topic that we can hopefully discuss at some other point. but. Uh, the market uh, mechanism will uh, de de determine, you know, just uh, in the future. And right now, uh, it looks like still hydrocarbons are on the rise, and uh, there will be a more balanced, you know, uh, market. Uh, and uh, and of course, the contraction in the economy is, you know, just will also have an impact on the supply side, you know, uh, uh, sorry, on the demand side. While on the other hand, you know, the supply side dynamics will also, you know, remain the same. Um, thank you, Daphne. What can you say about other important issues, such as migration? Do you think these issues uh, have become more challenging during the pandemic, and what can be done to properly manage these challenging issues? Uh, dear Aslan, you know, just uh, migration is an issue uh, has also become more important after the Syria conflict, especially in Turkey, as you know, and. Uh, now Turkey hosts on almost you know four million Syrian refugees. Uh, the the issue regarding the pandemic you know during that time uh, and and the refugee crisis is because uh, because these people live uh, especially those who have not been you know just uh, and under the protection status and who are living in refugee camps. Uh, it is very difficult to control the pandemic there. Right, because they live all together, you know, and they are, uh, and they don't have much space, you know, just uh, to give. And uh, this has become an issue, you know, just definitely for all the countries hosting these refugees, and um, and this will remain to be an issue as long as the Syria conflict remains. So it has nothing to do with the pandemic, but the pandemic, of course, makes it difficult. You know, even uh, their living conditions were difficult, even though. We know that, especially we also have a great report in the Atlantic Council, how well Turkey, you know, uh, treated the refugees in, you know, just here in the camps in Gaza Antep. I personally visited. I mean, I think Turkey did a terrific job regarding to this. But on the other hand, uh, you know, globally, it's they are not only in Turkey, right? They are also in Greece, in Jordan, you know, just in other areas in Europe. In Europe, so the living conditions are still very tough for these people. Um, during COVID-19, 
COVID-19, which regions do you think are critical regions? And which regions are more resilient? Uh, it is hard to say uh, which regions are resilient. I think you are asking these questions uh, for in terms of you know uh, the uh, economic and per capita level and yes. this and that. Yes. And I do think that, and also, uh, I mean, pandemic affected all the regions. I think right now, United States is the region in the country most affected from the pandemic. But Africa, of course, you know, just also because of the economic conditions, living conditions, the hygiene conditions, you know, it is very difficult, you know, just uh, uh, for these people to survive, even, even during their, most of the population, not all of them, but most of the population, uh, to pursue their daily lives, right? Because of the lack of the hygiene conditions, uh, you know, uh, lack of water, you know, just so, uh, and uh, their uh, restricted access to health, you know, services and this and that. Uh, so I do think that Africa has, has, according to me, has suffered the most. God help all of us. Yes. Every, everyone in all Indeed. of the country. And thank you, Daphne, for joining. Um, thank you, Aslan. It's an honor. It's wonderful My to honor. see you again. <laughs> thank and you. and I also can, would like to congratulate you, you know, for your books and for your awards. You know, I think one of uh, I I also admire you a lot. You are one of the leading women, uh, which I think represents Turkey very well. And uh, also now uh, you are, you know, just contributing to Frankfurt Book Fair. I think it's a wonderful as a Turkish woman you are doing this. You know, for this country and you. you know, just for all women of Turkey. Thank you, Asla. Thank you, Defne, also for enlightening us with your expertise. These are very important issues that we get asked, and uh, it's really an honor to welcome you here. And uh, I think uh, my audience will really enjoy because every day, if I talk to anyone, uh, these are the first questions: like, how long this will last? What will be the impact? what are the issues, and we are not alone. All the world is living in the same uh, condition, and this has been very helpful. Thank you very much. It's my honor to uh, get, uh, have you as a guest here. Thank you, Aslan. Thank you very much.